Hola y bienvenidos a esta lección del español 2. This lesson is the wrap-up for this unit. Uh, we had several things in this chapter. We had the vocabulary. Um, let's go over that real quick. Just make sure, refresher, make sure we know those words. Okay, here we go. Let's just try to go through them quickly. La entrada, entrance. La ganga, everybody should know ganga. Ganga is a bargain. El letrero, you should remember letrero is sign. Liquidación, sale, mercado, market, salida, you should all remember that, exit. Claro, oh, hablamos de colores claros. Like this is a color claro, it's a light color, clear or light. De solo un color, solid color. Oscuro, dark. Pastel, pastel, um, pastel. It's sort of the Easter egg colors. Vivo, un color vivo es un color bright. De qué está hecho? Of what is it made? Está hecho de, it's made of. El algodón, cotton. Cuero, leather. Lana, wool. Seda, silk. De la sintética, synthetic fabric, synthetic fibers. Alto. Now, it's not tall like we did last time. This time alto is high, like precios altos, high prices. Bajo, as in precios bajos, low prices. La caja, it can mean the box, but we also use it for the cash register. El cajero would be a person with the caja, in other words, cashier. Cheque, check, cheque de viajero, traveler's check. Now, I've, I've learned that a lot of people in these rising generations don't know what cheque de viajero is. Traveler's check, it's a basically a guaranteed check that you can take with you when you travel. Um, cupon de regalo, gift certificate. We, we also said that we can use tarjeta de regalo these days because we have a lot more gift cards instead of gift certificates. Oops, that says do regalo. That needs to be de regalo. Sorry about that. Um, el efectivo, dinero en efectivo, would be cash. La caja, oh, cash register. Gastar, to spend or to waste. Precio, precio is a price. Tan como, actually this is an old vocab word. What is it doing in here? Tarjeta de crédito, credit card. Apretado, if a shirt is apretado, it is tight. Escoger, escoger, to choose. Estar de moda, si algo está de moda, it is in fashion. El estilo, me gusta tu estilo, style. Exagerado, like outrageous, beyond normal. Flojo, it's the opposite of apretado. Loose, marca. Marca is a brand. Mediano, medium. Numero. Now, numero is different than talla. Talla is like a shirt size, a pant size. Numero is used for your shoe size. Probarse, to try on oneself. It's a stem changer. So, me pruebo, I try on myself. Te pruebas, you try on yourself. To try on. La talla, la talla mediana, grande. Talla is size. Anunciar, to announce. Encontrar, you might want to encontrar some good gangas. Encontrar, encuentro, encuentras, to find. En realidad, in reality. Me, man, I got another spell change, or uh, mistake. Me importa. I don't know why. I think I grabbed these from somebody else. My apologies. Me importa, to me, is important. Inmediatamente, oh, I'm sorry, inmediatamente, immediately, whenever we see that mente on the end of a word, that's like the English L-Y. Me parece que, it seems to me that, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. ¿Qué te parece? How does it seem to you? Recientemente, recently. Este, esta, this, estos, estas. These, 
Esa, es that, esos, esas, those, and aquel, aquella, that one over there, aquellos, aquellas, those over there. Okay, that is our quick review, super quick review of, um, of the vocab. Okay, besides the vocab, we also had three elements this chapter, three big elements. We had the preterite. Um, I'm not going to go over that really in here because I've got other videos that do the full-on explanation. But remember, we do have the preterite with, the, with its new endings for actions that, bam, are completed in the past. Um, yo hablé, tú hablaste, habló, hablamos, hablaron. E, haste, o, amos, aron, in the, with the ARs. Or, e, iste, yo, imos, yeron, with the ERs and IRs. Yo comí, tú comiste, él comió, nosotros comimos, ellos comieron. Okay. Again, not going to go over those, but that is the big doozy for this chapter. In this chapter, we also talked about este, ese, and aquel. Este libro, ese libro, aquel libro. This, that, and that one way over there. If, uh, if you're having troubles with that, go back and watch that video. The third main element that we had, this, let's see, so we had preterite, we had those demonstrative adjectives, este, es, este, ese, aquel. And then we also had um, the third thing, Using adjectives as noun, nouns, which is easy. Instead of saying, um, uh, la camisa azul o la camisa roja, uh, me gusta la roja. You can just use the adjective as a noun. You get rid of the, the word shirt, and you just say the red one or the red. Okay, now you might be saying, well, sweet, that was a quick video. You always make them long. No, I am going to throw one more thing in here because... One thing that I noticed that a lot of you, uh, my students, have struggled with through the chapter is this verb parecerse. And I didn't come out and really teach it maybe as, as much as I should have. So I wanted to do a quick review of it here. Um, when you say, que te parece, you're saying, you know, the book, I think it says something like, what do you think? But to, to figure out why it says, que te parece, for what do you think, can be a little confusing. So let's just go right into a mini lesson on parecerse. Um, quedarse is also a word this, we have this chapter that we should review here real quick. So let's talk about these. Parecerse, using the verbs parecerse and quedarse. Okay, some people will say that the verb parecerse is like the English verb think or to think. For example, que te parece esta camiseta? What do you think of this t-shirt? Well, te parece really isn't you think. Because then you would say, piensas, que piensas de esta camiseta. Instead, parecer works kind of like gustar, where it's, um, where it's more like, uh, it's pleasing to me. To me, they are pleasing. Um, so it's going to follow gustar. So get that in your mind first. And then we'll say that instead of to be pleasing, like gustar, it's more like to seem or to appear. In other, well, I'm, I'm probably confusing you at this point. Let me clarify. Let's first look at gustar. So when we have gustar, and you want to say, I like to read, you would say, me gusta leer. Now, we're not saying, I like to read. We're literally saying, to read is pleasing to me. Okay, so if we were to talk about something from this chapter, los pantalones. Me gustan los pantalones. The pantalones, they are pleasing to me. Okay, I hope this is coming back to you. This should be, um, this should be. I don't want to say no-brainer, but this should be simple for you at this point. Um, if not, if not, we're going to have to talk about gustar, and that's a full-on lesson, and I don't want to do a full-on lesson on gustar here. So let's look at parecer. Functions similarly. <clears throat> so we said earlier, what do you think of these pants? But let me switch that to say, um, how do these pants seem to you? Or what do you, how do these pants how do these pants appear to you? So because pantalones is, is plural, it would conjugate this verb parecer as parecen. Parecen, parecen los pantalones o los pantalones parecen. They seem. They seem to who? Well, if I'm going to ask you how do they seem to you, I would say que te parecen. Que te parecen estos pantalones. So how do these pants appear to you. And then the response would be, me parecen bien. They look good 
to me. Me parecen. Bien. Let's hit a couple practice ones of this. Let's see it in context. So, uh, talking to your friends, you ask, what you think this t-shirt? Okay. So, this shirt, how does it seem to you? You know, I should make this talking to your friend instead of friends. Um, okay. Does it seem to you? Well, camiseta conjugating parecer would be parece. Parece. And to you, ¿qué te parece esta camiseta? What do you think of this shirt? Carlos would respond, it seems to me very ugly. To me it seems, que it seems, parece to me, me. Me parece muy fea. Thanks, Carlos, for being honesto. Okay, let's try another. Talking to your friend again. Now we're talking about zapatos. Zapatos, it's going to be plural. What do you think of these shoes? Well, these shoes, it seems or they seem? It would be they seem or appear. So it would be parecen. Que parecen estos, pant perdón, estos zapatos. Okay, so what they seem to you. Que te parecen. Que te parecen estos zapatos? And then your friend responds, Oh, fantastic. So she says, or he says, to me, they seem fantastic. To me, me, they seem, parecen, fantásticos. ¿Dónde los compraste? Where did you buy them? Okay, and quedarse, like I said, is similar um, to fit oneself. So if you want to say, do these pants fit me well? Do they fit? Quedan? Quedan? Do they fit me? Me quedan? And let's throw in bien. Do they fit me well? Me quedan bien esos pantalones? And then your honest friend says, no. No. They don't fit you well. No quedan? They don't fit who? You. No. No te quedan bien. Son muy apretados. No te ves bien en esos pantalones. Prefiero aquellos pantalones flojos. All right. So just a real quick glance at quedarse for you. And you guys, that is the wrap-up of this chapter. Once again, for your test, you're going to have preterites. You're going to have the demonstrative adjectives, este, ese, aquel. You're going to have vocab. You're going to have leave out the... Um, Leave out the noun, using adjective as a noun. A couple of these, me queda, te queda, me parecen, uh, will be mixed in with there. And, uh, and let's see, I, I guess I should give you a hint. Um, extra credit, I might have, let's say, capitals, capitals in South America uh, will be your extra credit. Okay, that's long enough. Ciao.